So thank y'all for coming. Uh, I guess it's easy. I've been out there a couple months seeing how it affects people every day. And you come home and people are just sitting there watching cable TV and goofing off and thinking it's just going to get better by itself. And uh, it's just time to, there needs to be some kind of oversight, in my opinion. But I want to start with, uh, with Warren and tell us about your struggles trying to fight for the fishermen. What, what have you run into as far as uh, they're still not able to wear respirators out there in the worst of cleaning this oil? And I think the health concerns, you and Chris can probably touch on, but uh, what kind of work have you done as far as fighting for those guys? I was uh, invited to participate with a group of 12 other law firms from five different states. And the difficulty in this particular case is that there's a case called uh, Robbins Dry Dock, which stands for the general proposition that to be able to make a claim, you have to own a proprietary interest in an object which is affected by an accident offshore. If you own a rig that's blown up or a boat that's blown up, you can make a claim. If you don't own an object, you can't not make a claim. And that was a big problem after the Exxon Valdez spill. So after that terrible incident in Alaska, Congress passed the Oil Field Protection Act, which made an exception to that law and allowed persons affected by an oil spill to bring a claim. But they funded it only to the extent of $75 million. So what we did in order to get our toe in the door of the courthouse, so to speak, and to try to keep this case in Louisiana rather than having it moved to Houston, as uh, BP did, by filing a Limitation of Liability Act there. We filed the first suit against BP and alleged that it was improper for them to require workers to sign a general release of their rights before they got involved in the cleanup work. And we were able to get a favorable ruling by a federal judge in New Orleans. So we do have a case pending. Everything has been put on hold, however, because of the uh, creation of the $20 billion fund, which was a compromise between BP and uh, President Obama's administration. I. Uh, I have with me tonight a report from Ken Feinberg as to what he has decided and what he has not decided to do about either honoring or not honoring claims under that particular fund. There's more unanswered questions than answered questions. But essentially the fund will pay for claims for injured persons. It will not pay for anything related to the very controversial moratorium, which is adversely impacted this area so much at this time. It will not pay for all field workers. That will be through a separate hundred million dollar fund. So I don't want to go into too many more uh, details there, Drew. Yeah, that's great, Warren. Um, 